and only those who are willing to break out of their routine are going to be able to be on the cutting edge of what God wants to do in the earth. And while you could grieve your routine, you may mess around and miss God. God needs a few crazy people who don't mind getting out of line. God needs a few crazy people who don't mind upsetting what they've known so that they can step into what God wants to do now. She has already been anointed by her father, T.D. Jakes, to take over the ministry. So she does, you know, she does preach. T.D. Jakes still preaches, but he already did all that. So the Potter House is already set. Okay, so this is a successor to come. So she was preaching, okay, and... Uh, <laughs> but flexibility was, uh, was the theme to what I gathered, okay? A God of flexibility. So we're going to find out as to exactly what she means by that. So this is, Sarah. if stuff don't make sense, do not worry, but that's how she rolls, okay? <laughs> All right, so Sarah Jakes right here. Here we go. I got so much flexibility that I don't want to lock you into what I've known. And I believe that one of the greatest disservices that we have done is not elaborating on the flexibility of God that God could use you in spite of your shame that's flexibility where man says I'll never touch you where man says I'll leave you alone God says I got more flexibility than your mother had I got more flexibility than the culture has I can restore what the locusts have eaten because I got flexibility nothing is too far gone nothing is ever over because we serve a God who has flexibility in the heavens, wrapped in flesh, in the womb of a woman. I got enough flexibility to wrap myself in flesh and still be the father. I got enough flexibility to not just be crucified and raised, but to also leave you with the Holy Spirit. I got enough flexibility. The disciples were crying because they thought they were losing Jesus. Jesus says, don't wait, the comforter is coming. You're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost is fall. Because just because I'm gone doesn't mean you are without a God. I got enough flexibility to make sure you're still covered. Even if I'm not sure, oh, I don't know who needs to hear that. But I feel like God wants someone to understand that you're still covered. Even if you don't see covering in the way that you want saw it. God says, I still got you covered. I got a plan. I know you feel forsaken. I know you feel abandoned, but I still got you covered. You're covered. And if we are going to be willing to be in relationship with God and to exercise this cognitive flexibility, we must be willing to reject our routines. Uh, that's the hard part. Man, I'm thinking about when the Lord came to Abraham and he told Abraham, get out of your father's house and out of your country and into a land that I will show you. Sometimes God gives us a revelation and if we aren't careful, we'll try to make the revelation fit within our routine. Oh. No. Okay, so as you can hear Sarah there, right? Every time she's preaching, she, she does not refer to the scriptures. She'll have a verse here and there. But it's this mindset, this idea of uh, God is going to give you a revelation. Okay? So when God gives you a revelation, it's going to take you, like, you know, maybe to the next level. Or, or like, you know, you're going to move uh, into your new season. Like, you know, things are shifting. So she always has something that has to do with uh, liberation, right? But we have to remember, God has already spoken, okay? God has revealed himself through the scriptures. That's the revelation that we're going to get. However, Sarah is almost like, okay, he's, she's always hearing God saying something to her, okay? She's always hearing God. But this is like, you know, God is exclusively speaking to her without saying that, okay, God is speaking to me through the scriptures. She doesn't use that. So this is a language, one of the languages that uh, most false teachers are going to use. They always, you know, um, make up that they're hearing uh, from God. So there's more what she said in this one. So uh, let's continue. That the revelation is meant to break us out of our routine. Oh, God, help me. He gives Abraham a revelation about what he can do with his life. 
that I can make you the father of many nations, that I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And most of us want the promises of God, but we don't want to break out of our routine that allows for the promise to have enough room to really take root. Oh, I feel like God is trying to help me say something, that so many of us are so restricted in our routine that God couldn't bless us even though he wants to, because we are more married to our routine than we are to the revelation that God wants to give us. And because we are married to our routine, the revelation doesn't have an environment that it can grow in. God says, I'm not going to put my revelation in a small vessel. If you want my revelation, you got to be willing to let go of your routine because your routine will restrict the blood flow of the revelation because the revelation God has given you has multiplication connected to it. And if you make it fit in your routine, that revelation is going to have to shrink. That's why you shouldn't be afraid when God starts pulling people away from you, when God stops messing up your routine, when God starts breaking you out of cycles, because if I start breaking you out of cycles, it means that I got something I want to give you that could not exist in that cycle. It could not thrive in that environment. It could not thrive in that relationship. You need an environment that is big enough for the revelation that God wants to give you. God has a revelation about who you are. God has a revelation about what you can do in the earth. God has a revelation about the gift he's placed on the inside of you. And the revelation is reserved for those who are willing to break out of their routine. Ruth gets a revelation. She's got to leave Moab. David gets a revelation. He's got to reject his routine as the shepherd boy. It is not uncommon. That's not, you see like how uh, Sarah always just adds in things and then she's saying something uh, on the go. She says like, okay, Ruth had a revelation. She had to leave Moab. When you read the story of Ruth, there wasn't any revelation that Ruth received in order for her to leave Moab, okay? She left Moab on her own accord. But she had to throw in uh, Ruth over there. And then she went on to say, like, okay, you need to break your routine if you want to be able to receive the revelation. What, what type of routine are you talking about? Uh -huh. No, she doesn't even see that. So these are the words that sound so good. And like, you know, the crowd over there, they're just all eating it up. Like this is Sarah, right? She's, uh, she's bringing in word. But it's just like, you know what, Sarah? You're not saying anything. You are not saying anything. Yes, it does sound so good, but uh-uh. <laughs> You're not saying anything, but okay, let's continue, guys. For God to give us a vision that requires us to let go of the routine that has once made us comfortable. You got to watch out for people who don't mind getting out of their comfort zone. Because people who do not mind getting out of their comfort zone will never be without revelation. Because they recognize that I would rather be where God is than be in the place that I once knew. I would rather be where God is moving now than be in the place where he used to move. I would rather follow the voice of God into the unknown than stay in the comfort of what I used to know. I will follow God anywhere. You got to be careful because those kind of people start hearing things from God that allows him to deposit his vision for the earth into the world. Oh, I feel like getting happy in this place because I feel like there are some people in this room and God is trying to get you to break out of your routine and you are so afraid of who you will be on the other side of your routine that you've been wrestling with God and I hear God saying you wouldn't wrestle with me if you understood what was on the other side of your yes you wouldn't wrestle with me if you understood that my plans are to prosper you and not to harm you to give you a future and a hope I can't give you a future if you want a routine I can't give you a hope if you are still married to home you got to get out of the place that you have known and move into the place of the unknown I hear God saying your strength to brave the unknown is waiting for you to move I don't know who you are Potter's house but I hear God telling me that only a few people are really going to get this message because those are the few people who are going to be on the cutting edge of what God wants to do in the earth and if you're going to be on the cutting edge of what God does in the earth you got to be willing to let go of what you once knew I hear God saying that it's time for you to break out of your routine I hear God saying that it's time for you to do something different if you want to be something different you want to break a generational curse you cannot do it and stay in your same routine you're going to have to shock yourself so did you hear her right she's hearing god saying these things to her that you need to break on you uh you need to break your routine so like sarah I'd, what routine are you talking about okay like there's nothing wrong in having a routine you might have a routine that's actually good okay what what's wrong with having a routine you have a routine like okay you get up you brush your teeth you get up you you eat cereal or you, whatever else that you're doing what's wrong with routine it's not sinful to have a routine but in her mind, okay, she just had to add in some words, right? You need to break your routine in order for God to bless you. Where, chapter and verse, please. Sarah. 
Okay, where does it say that in scripture? Nothing. Then she had to add on the, the famous scriptures, right? Like, you know, uh, I'll bless, I have a future. That, that's Jeremiah, right? You know, <laughs> my plans. <laughs> <laughs> my plans for you are not to harm you, but to bless you, right? But that was specific to the uh, children of Israel, right? God had promised us going to take them out of exile. But obviously, okay, you, you, we, Sarah has to find a way to inject herself and her audience to uh, whatever else that she's preaching. So this is how Sarah preaches all the time. She has to say, like, oh, she's hearing God saying these things, and the crowd are just all eating it up. So, I always say this, anything you can take from Sarah, nothing but the fashion. The fashion, always on point. <laughs> but when it comes to preaching, oh my goodness. Oh no, she, she's a good talker, okay? A good speaker, a motivation speaker. She'll do that for you. But nothing in the word, nothing in the word. So well, watch this, okay? Because now it's going to the... <laughs> Oh, man, the Potter House, we have some trouble out there. Houston, we have a problem. Here we go. Sometimes you got to shake up your own life to show God that you don't mind moving in the direction that he's calling you to. You see, he gave Abraham the revelation, but just because he gave Abraham the revelation, he still placed it in Abraham's hand to respond to the revelation. We ask God for more revelation, but we have not yet responded to the first revelation. We want him to give us more and more, but God says, I didn't see you abandon your routine for the first revelation. You don't recognize that your obedience is connected to your next. You want next and you didn't even move now, but if you want to see what I can do in your life, you got to let me see what you will do with your life. You got to let me see what you'll do with what I already gave you to work with. You got a revelation, you got to work. And the revelation doesn't work in your routine. The revelation may not work in your friend circle. The revelation may not work in your family circle. But if you insist on having community instead of having consecration, then that revelation cannot take root and produce fruit. But there is something dangerous about somebody who will say, I choose consecration over community. I feel consecration is required for the next level of my life. God, if you make me choose, I wish I could take someone with me. But if you make me do it all by myself, you've been too good for me to turn around you've been too good for me to back away <laughs> sometimes our yes to God requires us to reject our routine okay so, yes, I have no idea so far everything else, right? Remember what she even said, right? She says, you have to reject a uh, community for consecration, okay? Why should we reject community? What's wrong with community? We are, God created us to be in community, okay? God created us to be in community. Your church is your community. Your neighbor, everywhere else you live, right? There's nothing wrong with you being community. And these two are not, uh, they are not opposed. So if you want to consecrate yourself because you want to be in prayer, you want to fast, you want to do all those things, who is going to be against those things? Nobody. But in her mind, she had to find a way, like, I don't know, is it what consecration and community? Because they both start with the C. So she had to inject in something over there. And then, you know, the way people are eating it up. And then the other scene where you saw like, you know, T.D. Jakes, okay? So proud. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like, okay, that's my daughter out there bringing in word, okay? Bringing in word. It's just like, no, 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 no. This is not it, Sarah. This is not it. But guys, she's not done, okay? So let's continue to hear more. I know if you're confused by now, don't you worry. We are all there. So, so far, what you've read is like flexibility, community, okay? <laughs> and consecration. I don't know what else, but we continue. To grieve our rhythm, to let go of what we've known. And it is easier to do that when we are rejecting our social patterns and routines. But it is much more challenging for us to reject our routines when they are mental routines, mentalities, routine way of thinking, routine ways of being. Uh, 
When I was studying for this message, I was looking at Paul's letters to the church of Ephesus. I specifically looked at the letters to the church of Ephesus, although there is a recurring theme in almost all of his letters. But there was one in Ephesians that really stood out to me. It's in Ephesians 4, and I want to share it with you. I want to talk about us breaking out of the mental routines that keep us from laying hold of the identity required for us to walk out who God has called us to be. God help me. Ephesians 4 verse 12. Context for those of you who may be unfamiliar is that Paul has, he has converted a group of people in Ephesus. They have received... Okay, so uh, Sarah is going to use scripture. <laughs> Ephesians. <laughs> so we're going to have to wait and hear exactly what she's going to tell us about this. Okay, because... Sarah always oh, just, the next minute we are in Jeremiah, the next minute is telling us the story about uh, uh, David, Ruth, we are in uh, God's flexibility community, now we've jumped into uh, Ephesians, okay? So let's just hear what exactly she's about to tell us, because who knows, this is Sarah Jakes, okay? She always finds a way to <laughs> add everything up, but we continue. Until you start attacking your routines, you may just know Jesus as your savior, but you will never experience the full development of what it means to be a disciple because you stop at being saved instead of being conformed. Transformed. That's why we have sometimes really good church people, but we don't always have disciples. Because disciples are those who have decided, I'm going to follow Jesus. I want to think the way he thinks. I want to speak the way he speaks. I want my spirit to look like his spirit. He is the model. That's why I think our church is in such a beautiful stage of development. Because we are going from recognizing that God can use anybody and we are having to be hungry enough to receive the word from whoever can get me close enough to the hem of his garment. I don't really care who's preaching if his train is going to fill the temple. I don't really care who's up there if the glory is going to shake the house. You see, that's a different kind of hunger. There are some people who will come and if their favorite person is and speaking they'll walk out of the room not realizing that they walked out on the very revelation that could have broken a stronghold off of them but when you get hungry enough to hear from God you come into worship with your hands lifted up because you recognize baby I'm so hungry to hear from God I don't care if Tanya does it I don't care if Justin does it your word may not maybe sitting right next to you you better watch who you're sitting next to because that person might have the word that God has been trying to deposit in your spirit sometimes you just gotta get in the environment where you know the spirit is moving I need you to turn me up in the monitors because we're just getting started and I want to make sure hell heals me because when we get finished in this place somebody's going to break out of their routine somebody's going to break out of the way they've been thinking and I want to make sure that we got all the heaven's resources got oh oh y'all yeah. <laughs> There's a shift taking place in the world. And only those who are willing to break out of their routine are going to be able to be on the cutting edge of what God wants to do in the earth. And while you could grieve your routine, you may mess around to miss God. God needs a few crazy people who don't mind getting out of line. God needs a few crazy people who don't mind upsetting what they've known so that they can step into what God wants to do now. Oh. I got break out of this thing and I can't wait for it to break sometimes you gotta break out of it I don't know who you are but you've been waiting for something to break off of you I hear God saying it won't break until you move it won't break until you start making a decision when you get desperate for it to break off of you you'll attract the level of glory that'll make sure it has no choice but to get up off of you if you don't believe me you better ask the woman with the issue of blood she messed around and got desperate for that thing to break off of her and she only had one shot who would you be if you started acting like you only got one shot to break this generational curse you only got one shot to establish this family you got one shot sometimes we take for granted that he's a God of first chances and second chances and third chances. And we start. I know, guys. You see? So this is what Sarah does. She didn't say anything. 
But did you see the audience? The way everybody is so excited. The music. And she actually had to say, please turn me up on the monitor. Because I want hell to hear me. What do you mean? So what if... Why do you want hell to hear you, Sarah? Huh? You are preaching. You are preaching to your audience right there. You are in church. You are preaching and teaching to the people who are there. So even if hell hears you, what exactly is hell going to do? Hmm? Is that message for hell? For what? For what reason? For what purpose? No, she doesn't. And then she keeps saying you need to break out. Break out of what, Sarah? Can you please be specific for once? Break out of what? And then she says like, you know, she keeps saying, oh, she's hearing God saying this, right? So this is just emotionalism that is just going to wild people up in their emotions and in their feelings. And then they are playing those drum music. And that's just about it, guys. Sarah did not say anything. There's nothing that she said to be like, okay, so Sarah, where is that in the scripture? Nothing at all. All she's just telling people is just her. You know what I mean? She knows how to wake the crowd. She knows how to wake the stage. And they say, like, oh, right now, uh, Potter House is in a good space, whatever. I don't know. It looks like they're losing people to me. I, I saw some empty seats, but that's not an issue. We know they have a big empire. But needless to say, whatever she's saying over here, she is just jumbling upwards. And then she... I mean, she just knows how to wake the crowd. That's it. So TDJX is very, very happy as you, I'm um, sure you guys uh, saw him. Okay. Let's finish up this and then we'll do the comments. Cause I know you guys have something to say. <laughs> Let's continue. But I hear God saying that's when you abuse grace. You got to act like you only got one shot to get this right. You got to act like you only got one shot to deliver this message. One shot to write this song. One shot to build this business. One shot to get this marriage right. I got one shot. When Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus in Ephesians 4 verse 12 he's trying to get them to protect what they got from God put it on the screen for me because I want to show you how to protect what you got oh. I got a different text God just gave it to me, y'all. Give me, it's Ephesians still, but it's further down. Give me verse 17. Ephesians 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore. So just, just now, uh, she just got a word, okay? But hey, let's, let's hear the word, okay? <laughs> and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Oh. Don't let the New Testament language fool you. You can replace Gentiles with culture, with family, whatever routine it is that you got to break out of. I want you to understand this. I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the culture walks. You don't have to walk like the rest of the world walks. You don't have to do this the way that you've seen everyone else do it. Because they walk as in the futility of their mind. And verse 18 continues. It's just having their understanding darkened. They walk that way because they haven't seen the light. And it's okay, our job is not to judge them. But you who have seen the light have a responsibility to walk like you saw him light something up for you. Can we take about 10 seconds and thank God that he lit something up for you? I know everybody's saved in this room, but there's about two or three of us who once were blind, but now we see. There's about two or three of us in this room who thought that there was only one way to do this thing, but God turned the lights on. You would have been in jail. You should have been dead. You should have been divorced. You should have been depressed. You should have been in a mental hospital. You should have been, but he turned the lights on. That's why you can't judge where somebody is. They're walking in the darkness that you knew well. If it wasn't for the goodness of God, who turned the lights on for you? Having. Okay, guys. So that's, uh, that's Sarah Jakes, okay? They've brought out the message. Yes, she read the scriptures, but it's just like, okay, can you tell us what this means? 
Can you tell us that, that what the scripture is saying? What exactly is this text teaching? No, nothing. Okay. So then she jumped on to say, you were once blind. Now you can see. I know there are believers in here. Like, no, 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 no. Stick to the text. Stick to the text. They don't, they, you know, she doesn't do that. And she does this all the time. Okay. There's some truth that she'll say something over there. Like, okay, you know, you need to be, uh, you know, just feel good things, but never at the core of everything else that she's teaching. So this is uh, exactly what Sarah always brings. Okay. So yes, <laughs> Sarah Jakes, the queen of twister scripture. Okay. She knows how to twist them scriptures. Okay. <laughs> That's Sarah Jakes for you guys. You need to be flexible. You're going to be, you, God is going to break you out. It's just, it's like, can you tell me specifically? And then she went on like, oh, God is looking for crazy people who are willing to do crazy things. Where does it say that in scripture? What crazy things are you talking about, Sarah? Why should we be doing crazy things? Huh? Where does it, God is looking people who seek after his own heart. God is looking for people who are going to worship him in truth. That's what God is looking for. But according to Sarah, God is looking for crazy people. It's in contradiction with the scriptures. A contradiction with the scriptures. So that's what you get with Sarah. I'm telling you, like, it never ends. Okay? It never ends. It never ends. It never ends. So that's what uh, we get uh, with, uh, well, with Sarah. Okay. 